And dear colleagues, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, acknowledge the organizers for the opportunity to participate in this conference with my talk. Uh, as you can see, uh, the topic of my research is focused on the application of conducting polymer composites in the electrochemical energy storage devices. I think the practical importance of uh, metal ion batteries is uh, um, quite obvious, uh, ranging from mobile devices to uh, electric vehicles. And uh, practically, these devices uh, is consisted of uh, two uh, opposite uh, electrodes. Uh, each of them uh, contain some amount of electrochemically active material. Uh, there are plenty of uh, different uh, electrochemically active materials, different chemistries, but uh, in this talk I will focus not on them, but rather on the other uh, polymeric part of these uh, electrodes. Uh, so let's uh, consider that we have uh, some model example of the active material, such as lithium iron phosphate, which is uh, very commonly used. Uh, it is important to that uh, um, active material should exchange electrons with uh, current collector and electrical circuit and uh, lithium ions with electrolyte and uh, uh, opposite uh, counter electrode. And so the whole structure should be electrically and ionically conducting. But most of the active materials are not electrically and ionically conducting. Um, and, uh, so they uh, usually should be uh, obtained in as a very, very small particles uh, to uh, decrease the conducting pathways and decrease the resistance. And these particles should be placed in a kind of uh, electrically conducting polymer matrix which should uh, provide electrical and ionical conductivity of the whole structure and uh, the mechanical integrity. So we need to obtain rather unusual polymer composite, which uh, have a uh, very large amount of filler, uh, above 90%, and uh, relatively small amount of uh, matrix. Usually, to obtain the electrode, uh, fluorinated polymer binders such as PVDF is added to the electrode to provide mechanical integrity and uh, to make this binder conductive. Uh, some amount of carbon black conductive energy is also added. But uh, this adding of carbon is not really enough because, uh, as you can see, the carbon particles contact with the active material only in some areas, and in other areas, the electrons couldn't reach the places where lithium ions intercalate. Uh, so it is uh, practically accepted that uh, each uh, of uh, active material particles would also be coated with uh, electrically conducting shell. It is um, prepared uh, usually by mixing this particle with some sugar and, uh, for example, glucose, and then uh, this sugar is being carbonized to form the electrically conducting coating. Uh, so you can see that uh, this uh, electrostructure is uh, quite complex and uh, consists of uh, different parts, and uh, moreover, it has uh, some more problems. First of all, uh, this uh, electrode uh, material incorporates uh, quite large amount of uh, additional components, carbon black, PVDF, and uh, carbon cells, which amounts uh, up to 25% by weight. These materials are not electrochemically active, and they cannot store charge and can contribute to the capacity of the electrode. So, the overall amount should be minimized as much as possible. And moreover, uh, the use of PVDF causes um, uh, some concerns about environmental impact 
because PDF requires toxic and expensive NMP solvent. Uh, and uh, uh, now um, uh, the researchers is focused on uh, searching other polymeric binders, uh, which are processed through, uh, for example, aqueous-based solvents. In my talk, I will consider uh, two possible approach to reach this, uh, uh, this purpose. Uh, first of all, we can use uh, conducting polymers as a binders. These systems uh, can not only serve as a binders, but uh, also uh, act as a conductive agent. Uh, to replace the carbon black. Uh, among the conducting polymers, this uh, derivative P dot is uh, the most known because uh, it is very promising due to its uh, um, excellent electrochemical stability and uh, high electrical conductivity. And moreover, some carbonaceous nanomaterials such as carbon nanotubes and graphene oxide can be incorporated as uh, 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 conducting agents, uh, but these materials uh, uh, cannot uh, uh, act as binder, binding and they uh, don't, don't have any adhesion properties, so they should be uh, blended with some amount of polymer and uh, we will see that this interaction between the polymer binder and carbon nanotubes is quite important to reach the uh, good electrochemical performance of the resulting cathodic materials. The use of carbon nanotubes is very interesting because they have a very low percolation threshold and also they do not interfere with uh, ionic conductivity as much as uh, bulk carbon black particles do. So let's start with using uh, conducting polymer, uh, polymers as a binders. Mm, this pitot polymer is uh, not soluble or dispersible in any solvent. So to make this um, processable, it is synthesized through this uh, template approach in the presence of uh, polystyrene siphonic acid. Uh, during the synthesis, we obtain uh, kind of interpolar electrolyte complex between p-dot and oppositely charged uh, electrolyte where p-dot oligomers are attained to the PSS carrier. In the solid phase, such p-dot PSS complexes uh, undergo phase separation with uh, formation of uh, p-dot uh, PSS enriched domains which are responsible for electronic conductivity. And these domains are encapsulated in PSS outer shells, which are leaf and ion conducting, and also PSS shells provide me mechanical stability of the whole film. It is interesting that uh, this uh, uh, PSS phase have um, has a relatively constant uh, um, composition. For example, if we obtain p dot PSS composites uh, with different starting concentration of the regions, and then remove this uh, PSS um, microphase by dissolving it uh, in, for example, alcohol, we obtain p dot PSS uh, complexes with almost uh, constant composition. It seems that uh, during the synthesis of pilot process, some disproportion takes place and uh, the composition of the both microphases are almost equal in over the concentration ratios. And this feed ratio influences only on uh, the ratio between these two microphases. So later in this work, we will use this uh, p dot PSS complex uh, of the composition uh, uh, one by one, which have electrical conductivity about one Siemens per centimeter. Um, 
uh, obtain interesting result that uh, this uh, heat PSS complex uh, can act not only as a conductive binder, but uh, also could replace this carbon shell that should be uh, coated on the surface of the uh, active material particles. Uh, we can see that if we uh, use uncoated active material particles, then the capacity value is quite low because the utilization of the active material capacity is uh, limited. But if we use conducting polymer as a binder, this capacity value can be significantly increased and uh, reach the almost theoretical value, value that we also reach uh, when we call these particles with carbon. So by using conductive polymer binder, we can eliminate this stage of porting LFP particles with uh, carbon. But uh, the result system has significant drawback, which is poor cyclic performance. We attribute this um, behavior to the uh, poor mechanical properties of p dot PSS, which is very brittle material. It is important that the binder should provide sufficient adhesion between the uh, electrode laminate and the current collector. Uh, we can predict this adhesion value, for example, by measuring uh, water content angles on the polymer binder films and current collector. We can see that uh, aluminum foil, which is used as a current collector, is uh, rather hydrophobic material, which you can have. Uh, uh, good adhesion to hydrophobic polymers such as PVDF, but uh, p PSS is a more hydrophilic polymer which uh, can be can uh, show uh, poor uh, affinity to this uh, metallic surface. So to um, improve the performance of p PSS based uh, electrodes, we can use different approach. First of all, we can modify this current collector, for example, by the treatment with uh, uh, oxidizers or acids. And uh, the second approach that we, we consider is uh, adding co-binders. Uh, in many publications, uh, pitot PSS as a binder is intermixed with uh, other polymer uh, co-binders but uh, usually the exact function of this co-binder is uh, not clear. Uh, it is said that the co-binder may act as a thickener agent. In fact, uh, we observed that, for example, polyethylene oxide can uh, prevent the phase separation of the cathodic layers to obtain the uniform structure of the electrode. But uh, from our point of view, the more important feature is the improvement of mechanical and adhesive properties of the binders. Uh, there are different polymers that can be used to, as a co-binders to p dot uh, For example, polysaccharides such as carboxymethyl cellulose polyacrylic acid. But we, in our work, um, introduced these two polymer, polyethylene oxide and polyphenylene oxides, because this polymer uh, can be um, immiscible with p dot PSS in all ratios and also they are ionically conducting. And as you can see from this picture, the addition of these polymers to p dot PSS, uh, for example, improve the film form forming properties of this binder. Uh, I say just a few words about this second polymer, sulfonated polyphenyl oxide. Uh, when we obtain the films of this binder from the aqueous solution, we observed uh, some phase separation uh, between hydrophobic polyphenyl oxide uh, phase and the hydrophilic phase containing sulfonic groups. We can contrast these phases, for example, by obtaining 
uh, sought with silver. We believe that this uh, ionic clusters are responsible for lithium ion conductivity of this polymer. And in fact, we observed uh, increase in lithium ion conductivity by siphonation of this polymer by in two orders of magnitude. Uh, so uh, to obtain the, the final binder, we blended this p dot PSS with uh, co-binders, polyphenic site or SPPO. Mm, uh, to do that, we obtained uh, the following approach. Uh, first of all, we removed this uh, PSS uh, out of shells uh, by washing them out with organic solvent, propanol, and then uh, purified p dot PSS complex was intermixed with the co-binder. From this uh, picture, we can see that uh, introduction of um, co-binder uh, not really decreases the conductivity of uh, the starting p dot PSS complex. It is surprising because uh, uh, co-binders are electrically insulated. In case of SPO, we can see that uh, electrical conductivity is uh, almost constant in the broad range. We attribute this to the phase separation between p dot PSS and SPPO. Yet in the case of polyethylene oxide, we can observe even some increase on the conductivity beyond the value of p dot PSS. The resulting uh, composite binders was applied to create the electrode composites. Uh, to characterize the mechanical properties of the electrodes, we applied the standard TPU test. And during this test, the electrode uh, was determinated from the current collector with the constant rate, and uh, the for force needed for it was uh, measured. Uh, it should be said that uh, when we used a, re a relatively high amount of uh, lithium iron phosphate, the adhesion force of the electrode is usually low, and uh, mm, we observe some decrease in capacity. We can eliminate the capacity fading by decreasing the amount of the binder, for example, PVDF, but in this case, we uh, lost uh, the energy density. But when we use uh, the composite binder, uh, based on p dot PSS and uh, SPPO, we can uh, obtain the stable behavior of the battery even with a uh, large amount of the active material. Um, so when we use individually SPPO as a binder, the capacity is low because this polymer is electrically insulating. And we, when we use uh, p dot PSS, we also observe some capacity fading due to insufficient adhesion strength of p dot PSS, but the combination of these two binders results in excellent uh, cyclic stability. And uh, by doing that, we can uh, prevent this delamination of the electrode composite and uh, uh, provide uh, better adhesion to the aluminum foil current collector. And uh, in this part of my talk, uh, let's consider the use of uh, carbon nanotubes as conducting engines uh, to create um, better electrodes. And these materials uh, uh, show rather low um, percolation threshold. For example, in polyphenol oxide matrix, this threshold is uh, far low than one percent. Mm. When we can compare the, this uh, carbon um, adduction agent with uh, typical carbon black, we can observe uh, drastic increase in electrical conductivity. Even in uh, small quantities, carbon nanotubes can provide. Uh, high electrical conductivity of the electrode composite. And uh, our electrodes uh, 
demonstrate uh, very high capacity and uh, high charge to discharge rates. So we can quickly charge or discharge our electrode. Uh, it should be said that uh, carbon nanotubes uh, do not form stable dispersions and most of solvents. And uh, to, it is quite important to provide good dispersion stability of carbon nanotubes in, in our uh, uh, suspension, uh, that, which is used to obtain the electrode. Uh, to achieve that, we can use polymer binder as a dispersion stabilizer. And uh, in some cases, it uh, can cause disagglomerations, disagglomeration of uh, initial carbon nanotubes bundles and uh, uh, single nanotubes encapsulated with polymer can be obtained. Yeah. And from these microscopic images, we can uh, see uh, different carbon dispersion in the PVDF NMP system. And uh, we observe that uh, increase in this quality of this dispersion result in increase of electrical conductivity. So this agglomeration of carbon can significantly increase the conductivity of electrode laminate. And this is quite important for creating the electrodes. You can see from these pictures that um, the electrodes uh, have a different um, electrical conductivity, uh, uh, demonstrate uh, much different behavior at the higher charge discharge rates. So, by improving the dispersion quality of carbon nanotubes, we can achieve a higher electrical conductivity and the higher capacity at the uh, higher discharge rates. We try to different uh, polymers as a possible uh, dispersion stabilizers for carbon nanotubes. The chemical structures uh, are listed on this slide. Um, some polymers like uh, polyvinyl and fluoride uh, do not form stable dispersions of carbon nanotubes at all. And uh, it's most uh, Mm. Mm. Stable dispersions was obtained from these polymers, which uh, incorporate uh, ionic, ionic groups. This polymers is uh, amphiphilic, and uh, they can uh, absorb on the surface of uh, carbon nanotubes, for example, by uh, aromatic parts and uh, uh, the hydrophilic. Uh, functional groups uh, can provide the dispersion stability of these binders in polar solvents. Uh, the quality of the dispersion um, affect uh, both the electroconductivity of polymer carbon nanotubes composites and uh, this mixture with uh, uh, electrode active material. And so by providing better dispersion stability of carbon nanotubes, we can achieve uh, high electronic conductivities of the electrodes. Uh, from the impedance spectra, we can see that uh, this improvement of electrical conductivity enhances uh, the uh, charge transfer resistance in our electrodes. In this slide, we compare the rate capability of uh, different uh, electrodes uh, obtained with polymer CMT and composites and the binders. We can see that uh, the charge capacity at the higher charge discharge rates uh, has a strong correlation with uh, the conductivity of the binder. So, so this uh, parameter is uh, correlated with electrical conductivity. But when we mm, test our electrodes uh, mm, in condition of prolonged 
cycle with a large amount of charge discharge cycles, we uh, see quite opposite uh, uh, results. And this electrode based on P dot PSS, which you have the largest, uh, the highest uh, capacity, demonstrates uh, rather low cycle stability, which is obviously uh, resulted from poor adhesion force of P dot PSS. Uh, but when we compare the mechanical strength of uh, different uh, systems, we can see that uh, other binders uh, have uh, different uh, mechanical strength, but uh, the uh, cycling performance is uh, almost equal. Uh, to explain this fact, we can um, um, analyze the delamination purpose in more detail. And to do this, we um, inspected uh, the current collector after uh, delaminating uh, uh, the electrodes uh, in peeling tests. We can see that uh, when we use, uh, uh, for example, p dot PSS, uh, uh, the resulting current collector after delimination is shiny and assisted uh, primarily from the um, clean aluminum surface. But when the adhesion force is uh, uh, higher, we see that uh, um, quite a uh, large amount of our electrode is left on the surface of the aluminum column collector. In this case, this uh, failure uh, have rather cohesive than cohesive type. Uh, so we can conclude that uh, the electrodes uh, having this large values of peeling force um, are delaminated by cohesive type failure. So in this case, we you cannot observe some delamination of the electrode from the current collector and uh, the cyclic stability of our electrodes uh, are much better than in case of pedot places. And in summary, we can conclude that uh, electrochemical performance of our electrodes is uh, affected by two parameters, uh, the mechanical strange and uh, the, the electrical conductivity. Uh, to achieve the higher capacity, we should increase both these values. But unfortunately, um, the conductivity in the peeling force of our polymers uh, change in opposite direction. Uh, it is not surprising because uh, generally we um, couldn't uh, obtain highly conductive material uh, with good mechanical, elastic, and uh, flexible properties. And so um, to achieve the, um, the best electrochemical performance of our batteries, we should uh, find a good balance between the mechanical properties and uh, electrical conductivity. Um, in this case, we should recommend these two polymers to um, be used as the binders for carbon nanotubes. And then, as a summary, we can say that um, um, this uh, advanced carbon materials, uh, conductive materials, uh, carbon nanotubes, and uh, yeah, electrical conducting polymers uh, can be used to increase the content of um, electrochemical active material in the battery and uh, to increase the energy density. Uh, but when we used uh, just uh, conducting polymer, it uh, should be blended with other components to improve its binding properties and improve its conductivity. 
uh, electrode is um, prepared with carbon nanotubes, we should uh, wisely choose uh, the polymer binder. Mm. In this work, we suggest, uh, for example, polyacrylonitrile as a binder which is not fluorinated polymer and is more environmentally friendly than a common use for DF. And uh, then I want to acknowledge the help of uh, uh, my co-workers and 